This clip of Taylor Swift is going mega viral and people are saying that it is J.D. Vance's worst nightmare. And this comes at a time when J.D. Vance, Donald Trump, and all of the MAGA degenerates below them are doubling down on the racist, misogynistic attacks on VP Harris, just undermining her identity at every single turn because that's all they know how to do. There is a lot to break down in this episode, so I don't want to waste a second of your time. All that I ask is that you leave a like on the video below and double check to make sure you're subscribed to the Adam Mockler channel. So this all started with Jesse Waters saying something nasty about VP Harris and the way she speaks. Kamala was raised by an Indian mother in Canada, but now she sounds like Fanny Willis. Okay, so he says Fonnie Willis's name wrong, whatever, who cares, but what he's saying is just drenched in racism. He is saying that the way VP Harris speaks is unnatural, again, implying that she just recently turned black. He's basically leaping off the back of what Donald Trump has been saying. And then Peter Ducey had a fight with Corinne Jean-Pierre in the press room about whether or not VP Harris is faking her accent. A different topic. Since when does the vice president have what sounds like a southern accent? I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, I, I mean, this is... <laughs> she was talking about unions in Detroit using uh, one tone of voice. Is this something that same you Same line... Okay, Peter. ...that she, uh, she used the same line in Pittsburgh, and it sounded like she at least had some kind of a southern I think, drawl. I mean, what? do you hear the question that you're... I mean, do you think Americans seriously think that this is an important question? They care... You know what they care about? They care about the economy. They care about lowering costs. They care about health care. That's what Americans care about. Yep. So, That's what they okay, want to well, hear. This is something... They care about, your colleague just asked me about democracy. Well, basically, we talked about, went back and forth about democracy and freedom. Yep. That's yeah, what they care about. I'm not even going to entertain some question about the press. It's just, it, it's just hearing it sounds so ridiculous. Well, KJP can't say it, but I'll say it for her. It's a stupid, stupid question. But hearing it is the question i'm talking about the questions is is just insane is that how she talks in meetings here? i i'm just come peter we're, we're moving on we're still moving around go ahead and meet him Thanks. Uh, starting with Ukraine and this recent- So Republicans are caught up on how VP Harris speaks, trying to undermine her identity. And this brings us to J.D. Vance, who is the king of undermining the identity of women, of black Americans. Every single time he talks about women, it's the creepiest thing possible. We'll get to that. This Fox host, Laura Ingram, said, I guess these polls, they say your favorability isn't as high as Tim Walls. And J.D. Vance just smiles through it, just smiles through the pain watch senator um people are i guess they do these polls and they say oh your favorability isn't as high as tim waltz's you know there's a gender gap for your ticket compared to uh harris and waltz um uh, how do you go to the dis undecideds at this point the shrinking pool of people and and convince them that not only are you serious and you're seriously smart but you're a regular person i've known you for a long time you're really fun you're really funny um versus the giggle and vibe show that seems I like how she has to reaffirm that he is a regular person and look at he's just sitting there smiling through this acting like it's not painful look at I'm gonna skip 15 seconds ahead and he's in the exact same position just smiling through all of the pain as I skip through uh, and she says that he is not liked and I like how at the beginning she says I guess some of these polls say she acts like she has no affiliation with the polls but Fox News polls say that JD Vance is not as uh, popular as Tim Walls and Fox News is polling a separate Separate from their punditry and their polling tends to be pretty good. And this brings us to J.D. Vance's worst nightmare. Taylor Swift showing off her ability to name off different cats at a time when J.D. Vance has been attacking childless cat ladies. On your mark, get set, go. Scottish Fold, Ragdoll, Ragamuffin, um, Maine Coon, British Short Hair, Exotic Short Hair, American Short Hair, Devon Rex, Cornish Rex, Sphinx Cat, Abyssinian, Persian, Siberian, Burmese, uh, Norwegian forest cat. Uh, awesome. Keep in mind, Taylor Swift doesn't have any children and she knows every single type of cat. And this is what JD Vance says about childless cat women. You're calling it a sarcastic comment. Sure. And yet some women, and you got the feedback in real time, felt like it was a gut punch to them personally. Do you regret making that comment? Look, I regret certainly that a lot of people took it the wrong way, and I certainly regret that the DNC and, and Kamala Harris lied about but it. Do you but look, 
That's not an apology. He's saying, I'm sorry that you feel bad about my childless cat lady comments. Brett, what you said, Senator. Look, Kristen, I'm going to say things from time to time that people would disagree with. I'm a real person. I'm going to make jokes. I'm going to say things sarcastically. And I think that what's important is that we focus on the policy. There are certainly going to be things that I say. If I'm elected vice president, that people are going to say, well, I wish he had said that differently. I think it's most important to actually be the person I actually am and to say, those sarcastic comments were made in the service of a real substantive point. This country has become too anti-family. It's too expensive to afford a house. It's too expensive yeah. to afford groceries. So this is J.D. Vance doubling down on the childless cat lady comments, saying they were just sarcastic remarks that meant that were meant to mask a real problem. I'll point out the obvious first. He is running with the candidate that is explicitly anti-family. He is running with the dude who cheated on his wife with a porn star while his wife was taking care of their newborn son. Donald Trump is as anti-family as it gets, so J.D. Vance can't pull the family card. And also, J.D. Vance did not actually answer the question, he just pivoted around it like a snake. Donald Trump and I want to change that, and unless we get better leadership, we're not gonna. But, but again, just very quickly, given that people have told you directly, have spoken out, have said that they were offended, they were hurt by those comments, do you wish you never made those childless cat lady comments? I think that it's much more important for me to just be a normal human being who sometimes says so things no that people disagree with. I have a lot of regrets. Why does J.D. Vance have to keep affirming that he is a normal human being? Even when he was talking to Laura Ingram, she was like, you're a normal person, right? Every time J.D. Vance does an interview, he has to reaffirm everybody around him that he's not some sort of weird alien. There's one more thing that I want to show you guys that is great before we go. VP Harris campaign shares the wealth with a $25 million boost for down ballot Democrats. The Harris campaign announced Tuesday, today, it is sending nearly $25 million to Democratic committees to invest in down ballot candidates using its significant fundraising hall to try to secure majorities in Congress. And this comes in stark contrast to the way that Donald Trump is treating down ballot races within the Republican Party. Donald Trump is divesting money away from down ballot races to invest in his own legal fees. Meanwhile, VP Harris is taking from her massive pot that she has and giving money away. The campaign said it was transferring $10 million each to the Democratic campaign arms of the Senate and the House, plus an additional $2.5 million to the Democratic Legislative Campaign Committee, which helps elect Democrats to state legislatures. The Harris campaign is also sending $1 million each to the Democratic Governors Association and the Democratic Attorneys General Association. Quote, if we want a future where every American's rights are protected, not taken away, where the middle class is strengthened, not hollowed out, in a country where our democracy is preserved, not ripped apart. Every race this November matters. Harris campaign chair Jen O'Malley Dillon said in a statement, quote, the vice president believes that this race is about mobilizing the entire country in races at every level to fight for our freedoms and our economic opportunity. Just the difference between this future looking, forward looking message from VP Harris, it says the word future. We're fighting for a future where uh, compared to Donald Trump's make America great again, let's go back to the past, regressive apocalyptic rhetoric, the difference could not be more stark and I I do want to say I will be in Wisconsin in early October registering voters. If you live in or around Milwaukee, Wisconsin, there is a link in the description below to register to our voter registration event. Other than that, make sure you leave a like on the video, comment a blue heart, hit the subscribe button, and have a great rest of your day. Peace out.